going on? The heat is on. I'm down in the uh, set the base world headquarters here with the air conditioning working hard here in the basement. But I am powering through and we're going to talk about Ironman Alaska and we're going to talk about the courses and in this video we're going to talk about the swim course. Um, I have a couple athletes that are doing this race. I've made plans for several athletes so I've done some research on the course and kind of what I think. And I'm based here in Kansas City and I unfortunately am not going to be able to do them at this year but uh, I give them two cents worth and this helps them out and so I just started recording these and putting them on Facebook and YouTube so hopefully it helps people out and, and as far as the exact logistics of uh, the location, the venue and all that kind of stuff, I don't have eyes on that kind of stuff. I can look at the course maps for the most part and I've in different groups and heard different information about it so what I can give you is kind of my experience and what the course looks like from profiles and from the maps and everything and kind of where the pinch points might be and what might help you out the best if you as prepared as possible. So with that, we're going to jump right into it. I'm in Alaska. We're going to talk about the swim course, if I can talk. And if you got any comments, we're doing this one live, so you can shoot those comments up. I see them live here on my other screen. Uh, if not, if you're seeing this later, put it in the comments section of the Facebook, YouTube. I'll see them. I'll get to them and I can comment on them or incorporate them if you have any suggestions. So basically, we are looking at Ironman Alaska, inaugural race, Juneau, Alaska, August 7th, 2022. We all heard about the lodging situations, so it should be interesting to see how this pans out. Hopefully it works out in its most epic race ever, um, and it comes back, and it's an opportunity for people to keep doing this. Uh, I did uh, Lake Tahoe in 2013. It was a great venue and everything, but um, uh, one year was, the next year was canceled because of uh, forest fires. And the next year uh, it happened, and after that they kind of dropped it after three years. So um, I don't, there's it was an epic race. It was difficult. It was 8,500 feet of climbing on the bike, but for whatever reason it just didn't take hold, and they didn't keep bringing it back just because I think the logistics of it were just a little bit too difficult. So hopefully this one pans out, and they can keep it around for a while because it looks epic and it looks interesting to say the least. So we're going to jump right in. You look at courses. And you look at the swim map, and I have downloaded a PDF, saved to my computer, just so you can have it for later. So, I always like to save them just so you can have them offline or whatever, and you can look at them later. It is interesting to see <laughs> this little zigzag loop here to get the transition. So, I think they're uh, advertising there's going to be a little bit of a uh, zigzag back and forth to get the transition area. So, maybe a little bit of a run, probably a pass situation. So, just be ready for that. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, you know, maybe a chicane to get through to your bike and get on the bike course. But looking at the swim, we've got Auk Lake, and hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, but I also like to look at the average air temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit at this time of year. Now, they put these average temperatures on, and I think the average for Des Moines was low 70s, and this year it was, I think, uh, high 80s or 90s with the heat index almost 100 degrees. So these aren't always accurate. I'll always say, go check your weather, check your weather apps, and make sure you're dressing and getting ready appropriately. And I did Lake Tahoe. Um, it was freezing. It was below freezing uh, when we started the race. The water was, I believe, in the low 60s. Um, so when we got out, everybody was freezing. And basically, uh, I wore a cycling jacket and gloves all day long and didn't need to get rid of them. And it stayed pretty comfortable. It didn't super cold, but in the morning, it was pretty cold. I couldn't feel my hands by the time I got out of the water. Uh, changing out of my wetsuit was difficult. It was difficult for everybody. So <clears throat> keep that in mind. I mean, average water temperature is 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So if the highs are around 68 degrees um, for air temperature in the morning, it might be kind of chilly, especially if that water is 65 degrees. And almost true. Wetsuit legal, I'd bring a full wetsuit. Um, I would bring a, a neoprene swim cap. Um, always wear it when it's probably 70 or less projected. Uh, just because I don't like being cold out there. Uh, really helps keep your body warm and stuff. You just slide it on underneath your regular swim cap. It's not a problem. I tried boot booties in uh, Lake Tahoe 2013, and I found that they filled with water and didn't really help me. Um, and since then, I've done 70.3 Indian Wells. I believe that temperature is in the 50s. Um, yeah, my feet were a little frozen by the end, but it really wasn't a problem. Once I warmed up, I warmed up and wasn't a problem. Um, they're a little bit numb, but, but once you get on them and get on your bike, it's not really a problem. So... Personally, I don't go booties, um, but more than likely booties are going to be an option you could use this race. So make sure you pack accordingly. Definitely pack a, a neoprene zone cap, pack a full sleeve wetsuit, pack booties if you think you're going to use them. I'd go ahead and get them out if you think you're going to use them or want to try them. Um, just so you have everything and then bring 
your obviously your sun goggles. So when you look at the course map, you know you're taking off and you're going kind of a northeast type of situation. So the sun always rises in the east. So potentially you're looking at the sun, but if there's enough vegetation, the trees in sight here. And I've seen a few photos. You may or may not get sun in your eyes. I always bring tinted goggles um, just because. I don't have any problem even when it's dark seeing through the tinfoil goggles. Um, if it's cloudy or overcast, it's not really a problem for me. So I always bring them, just have them and use them. Um, they're comfortable. I've used them before. I know they fit. I know they work. It's not really a problem. So when you take off, it's going to be a two loop swim course. So notice two loops, 2.4 miles total. So when you come out, you keep the buoys on the left. And it's interesting, the buoys are on your right uh, coming back. But going out, they should be yellow, two turns at the reds. And then orange on the back course, and then reds turn again, and then catch your loop again, and then head out. So keep in mind, so they're probably more than likely going to be doing a rolling start. So they send about three or four athletes every couple seconds. Actually, and, and they did this for Des Moines this year, and for other races, um, like I've done Florida, they do that. It's a two-loop swim course. Uh, Des Moines was a two-loop swim course. I've done several two-loop swim courses. I've done Tulsa, where it's just one-loop swim course, and really... I didn't have, especially at the Ironman distance, there really wasn't an issue keeping enough space. Now, keep in mind, for Des Moines, there's less than 1,000 athletes out there. For Tulsa, there's probably a good two, 2,500 people out there, so it was a little bit more congested. But um, And then Florida, I believe we had maybe 1,100, 1,200 athletes or something like that. So just depending on how people sign up and how many people show up, how many start the race, it could be a little bit more congested, a little bit less. But basically... If you're a fast swimmer, swim to the left because most, most of the fast swimmers want to swim the buoy line. And if you're a little bit slow or don't want to be swam over, swim a little wide, you know. Um, just sight well on the buoys and then swim a little wide. And that way you let all the fast people go by you. Um, just watch out for the zigzaggers uh, because the more inexperienced athletes that aren't as experienced sighting tend to zigzag more. Um, so if you're experienced but you don't want to get run over by the fast swimmers, always kind of hang out in this little kind of middle gray zone. You'll see the, the the newer newest people kind of way out there because they don't want to touch anybody uh, and be bothered by anybody. And then you got kind of an intermediate people in the middle, and you got your fast swimmers on the buoy line. So, you know, I was able to find in most races there are two loops. I've been able to find clean enough water at the Ironman distance level that's spaced out enough that it really isn't a problem as far as contact goes. But just be ready. There's probably going to be a little bit of contact when you come back in. You know, if you're at the beginning and you try to get out there, you're going to be there's going to be some congestion here. And if you're towards the end, there's probably going to be a little bit of congestion as you're showing through these two loops. And you hit, head out and hit the uh, uh, T2 and get out there on the bike course. So the key points, like I said, is always bring tinted goggles just in case you're facing the sun at any point in time. Um, now, you might be facing the sun here at this back loop or coming out for the first turn. Just depends on the time of day when you get in there. Um, it depends on sunrise. So I'd be checking sunrise, race time, all that kind of fun stuff. Like I said, I always bring tinted goggles, uh, mirror goggles. It's not a problem for me. Um, I'm swimming them in conditions. really isn't an issue. So personally, that's what I bring. Full suit, you know, full everything. Uh, neoprene swim cap to go along with your regular race swim cap that they give you. Booties, if you think you're going to use them, if you want to try them out, bring them. Um, if, you, if you think you're going to use them. Uh, personally, I don't like booty, booties to swim in. Uh, they fill full water and kind of drag me back. So I kind of avoid them. But... Um, more than likely a rolling swim start, and especially to the course, there'll probably be some contact congestion pretty much the entire swim course. Um, but like I said, I've done uh, Des Moines, uh, the full is two loop course. I've done Florida lately that's two loop course. And really, I think there's enough separation and, and distance between people that it really wasn't a problem. Um, I could get away from people if I needed to swim out wide or in close to the buoys and avoid people. It really wasn't a problem. So basically, I mean, it, it looks pretty straightforward. I think the key is going to be, you know, if that air temperature definitely holds true, if it's going to be way cool in the morning and come out of there, it's going to be hard. Your hands will probably be a little bit chilly. They're probably not going to allow gloves. Um, I don't think, I don't, I've never been in a race where they've allowed uh, gloves while you're swimming. So your hands will be cold. Um, hopefully they have wet suit strippers. Definitely take advantage because if you can't feel your hands to undo zippers and stuff like that, it's going to be really difficult to get out of that uh, wetsuit. So 
um, at least get to a wetsuit stripper, zip out the back, and then just let them peel it off of you and get to the tent. More than likely, if it is cold, they'll try to get heaters in that tent. So um, definitely, I would bring uh, gear for the bike that will hopefully keep you a little bit warm from the beginning. Maybe some tube socks so you can cut holes through for your hands or something like that. Keep your arms warm. In the aid stations, you can throw them away. You really don't care if you get them back or not. Uh, maybe an old uh, biking jacket or something like that. You don't care if uh, you drop it in an aid station and it gets donated or something like that. Um, I wouldn't necessarily go as far as like shoe covers or anything like that in your transition bag um, or worry about like hand warmers or anything. Really, once you get going, you should warm up pretty good. Unless it's raining, that could throw a, car, a wild card and everything. So just keep that in mind. But definitely be prepared for the air temperature to be cold, um, for the water temperature to be pretty chilly. And when you get out of that swim, the air temperature is still going to be cold. So you're going to have a little bit of time to try to get warmed up when you come out of that water. Probably not be warm in the ambient air temperature that's going to be out there. So that's kind of my take on the swim for Ironman Alaska. Um, you know, once the event happens and we get a little bit of recon for everybody, we can probably go back and add a little bit of flavor to this. But um, like I said, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's it's a pretty straightforward triangular or rectangular course. Two loops, not the end of the world. Um, like I said, pretty straightforward, pretty uh, run-of-the-mill kind of Ironman two-loop course. So with that, I'll wrap this video up and not throw it on forever. So hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And I'll see you. Oh, we got one. My coworker says that the water is highly tannic and very dark. So that's a good point, too. Uh, Rachel put on there. Um, it, it most, at least here in the Midwest, when we go out and we do swims in open water, it's green, it's murky. You can barely see your hand in front of your face. So just be ready for that. You know, if you're not used to open water swimming, you're going to go out there and swim in this. It's going to be super dark out there and you're not going to be able to see the bottom. So open water, that's kind of a, a fear. Um, you definitely need to work on that before you get out there because um, if it is very dark water, um, some people just kind of get a little bit fearful of that and, and kind of builds up a little anxiety. So definitely get out there and swim in open water as much as possible. Get ready for that. Um, so that's a good point that it's very dark. You know, you go into like Ironman Florida, um, it's not as dark. Ironman Lake Tahoe. Um, it was crystal clear. You could see through the bottom of the lake, which actually kind of freaked me out because it's almost like you're, you're afraid of heights. You know, you're so far up, but you're in the water, you're not going to fall. But it was just kind of weird to see the bottom, you know, 20, 30 feet down, um, which you're not going to have a problem with this lake, it sounds like. So keep that in mind. But I'm going to wrap it up. I didn't see any other comments. So um, if you have some comments later, put them in there and I get notifications and I'll answer any questions or anything I should add. Like I said, I might go back and, and add a little bit more to this and do a little bit of a review once the race actually happens. Uh, get some recon from my athletes and other people and see uh, you know, what went well, what didn't. Maybe if they're going to change anything or anything like that. So hopefully this helped you out. If it did, give it a like on Facebook. Give it a uh, thumbs up on YouTube. Give it a subscribe. Hit the notification button to see future videos. I'll talk about the uh, bike course and run course. I'm going to put those on out there for you, and hopefully that helps you out. And with that, happy training, and we'll see you on race day. I won't see you there in person, but we'll see you crossing the finish line and getting your medal and being that Ironman. So good luck. See you then.